friends, it's me, Amy, from All Well Workshop, and today we are going to talk about some um, simple embroidery stitches that you can use to um, embellish or add hand stitching to really any project that you're working on. Uh, so let's just get started. Um, all these supplies are pretty basic, and they're the kinds of things that are just really good to have on hand, no matter what kind of sewing you do. Um, so first of all, it's really nice to have some sort of hoop. So this is a simple wooden hoop in which I have some cotton fabric. Um, this is a more complex hoop, which actually has two tiers and it makes it easy to lift your work up to you. Um, but you can absolutely start with a simple, very cheap wooden hoop um, and then work up from you. Also hoops come in various sizes. You don't necessarily need a hoop that's as big as your finished embroidery. As you can see, this doesn't quite hold all of my stitching, um, but it's just nice to have different sizes on hand for different sizes of base fabric. Um, you will also need a needle. So this is an embroidery needle. Um, embroidery needles are come in a bunch of different sizes. Um, and they typically have a much larger eye than a typical like hand sewing needle. So you'll want to look for a needle that is um, termed an embroidery needle and you want one that isn't too, too thick that it's hard to push through the fabric and it'll damage the fibers. Um, the other thing you will need is some embroidery thread. Now there are lots of different kinds out there. A lot of embroidery thread comes in little skeins, sort of like this. Um, and then from there you use the um, thread, but often you'll want to split the strands because they come in um, six strand threads, but six strands makes a very thick line. Um, so a lot of people who embroider like to use three strands at a time. So you will cut the um, length of thread that you want. I like to have at least an arm's length to start with. Um, and then you go ahead and you split the strands. You can use as few as one strand if you'd like. And then you go ahead and you split like this. And then you have two threads when you start as one. So three strands is a pretty um, standard thickness. Now there's also other kinds of embroidery thread that are already joined, they're twisted together. Um, and those you're not going to split. So this is DMC Pearl Cotton number eight. I like using this thread for hand quilting um, where, with its bigger, a bigger running stitch. Um, and then this is actually um, a big ball of crochet thread. It's three cord crochet. Um, and it's, I would say the same thickness as um, three strands of normal embroidery thread. But this I bought secondhand. I think it's vintage, so I don't know if you can buy this anymore. But this is what I'm using today. So lots of options out there. The best thing I could tell you to do, even though you might not be able to right now, is to go to a store and touch the thread and see what um, looks good to you. So there are three main stitches that you will use in most embroidery projects. They are called back stitch, running stitch, and satin stitch. And today I'm going to teach you um, the simplest way to do all three. So I'm using two strands of thread today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and knot my thread at the end, both strands, but if you wanted to only use one strand, you would um, pull the um, tail, one of the tails, so that it was above the other one and only knot one strand. Um, I like to mark embroidery projects with a soft pencil, um, but you can really use any marking tool as long as the line is thin enough that your um, thread will eventually cover it. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw a simple line. There we go. So let's start with running or er, back stitch, which is my favorite embroidery stitch and it's the one that I use the most often. So essentially with back stitch, you are um, doing every stitch backwards. So you insert your um, needle from the bottom before the end of your line, and then with your stitch, you go ahead and you backtrack back to the beginning of the line, and you pull your thread through. 
then for the next stitch, you do the same thing. You go ahead and bring your needle out however long you want your stitch to be, which is about two millimeters. Pull it out and then you backtrack and insert your needle right at the same spot where you ended your first stitch and pull that stitch through. So you're always going backwards. You start your stitch further forward than you need to be, one stitch length, and then you bring it back. This is called back stitch. If you want your back stitch to move a little more quickly, it's easy to do. All you have to do is once you put your needle down from the top, you go ahead and keep moving your needle until you find the spot where you want your next stitch to come out. And all in one fell swoop, you both make a stitch and start a new one. So here I'm doing the same thing. I'm making a stitch and I'm choosing where I'm starting my next one. This makes back stitch a little quicker um, but it's also a little bit harder to be very precise. The most important thing for making beautiful back stitch is just making sure that all of your stitches are straight and the same size. So it's very important to make guidelines with a marking tool um, so that you can keep straight lines. And it's also really important to start to develop your eye for how long your stitches are. Um, and this takes practice. But with back stitch, you can sew um, just about any embroidering. You can embroider text, like cursive. You can do any line drawing. It makes a nice straight line. Oftentimes the back of an embroidery piece is just as beautiful as the front. Now for running stitch. So you start in the same way with a knot at the end of your thread. And running stitch has a space between each stitch, sort of like the classic um, line of stitches that you would see. So I'm going to do this actually sort of like how I do my hand quilting, where basically you just use your needle to go up and down, up and down the simplest possible way. I like to do about three stitches at a time before I pull it out. So you'll see there's a little space between each stitch. Now each stitch should be the same size as much as you can handle and each space should be the same size. So these are about, I'd say three millimeters each. Now you can also do it where you just go down and pull through and then back up the same distance away, whoops, and then back up the same distance away and pull through. But it's also good to start to learn the rocking motion of hand quilting, which is where you load those same stitches three at a time into the fabric and pull it all through. It helps to have a thimble, um, but since we're not actually hand quilting, that's what we have. The last sample stitch of, stitch of the day is satin stitch, which you can use to fill a larger area. Um, so for this, you just start at one end of the shape you're trying to fill, and you literally just put your needle back and forth across the shape to fill it. Now, instead of stretching my needle under and starting where I began, I'm making a stitch right beside where I just came out and then going back down. So all my thread is on the top of the hoop and there'll just be some tiny stitches on the back. 
So you're always starting right next to where you just exited. And I'll show you an example on the back in a moment once I have more stitches. So here's where I was satin stitching and you can see that all there is here is little tiny stitches where I um, came up right beside my last stitch on the back. So what you don't want on the back is big long stripes just like on the front. And that's how you do satin stitch. Embroidery has so many uses. Um, you can make amazing embroidery projects on their own and just keep them in a hoop and display them like that or you can um, embroider a, a patch to sew onto your clothing. You can embroider blocks for a quilt, which is what I'm doing right now, this Red Work series. Um, you can embroider right onto the clothing you've made, anything you want. Um, you, can, uh, you can embroider pillows, you can embroider socks. It's really a cool way to make um, the things that you're making really extra special. It's a chance to sort of slow down and practice some like meditative centering hand stitching, which is why I really love it, especially now. Um, it's very calming. It helps your breathing slow. And it's also very simple. It's not difficult. Once you get into the groove, you hardly have to think about it. One of my favorite things to do. Okay, Bobo, go ahead. Go on. Good boy. <laughs>